Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. In today's video we're going to be showing you how easy it is to top off the refrigerant specifically in an R22 system. These systems are tanks and they run for years and years and decades and a lot of people still have R22 systems and are simply unaware that you can purchase this online from abilityrefrigerants.com, ship it right to your door and we're going to show you how easy this is to recharge. Now you can get a two pound recharge kit that comes with this cylinder as well as the gauge and the hose and everything. And this is literally all you need for about $150. It's very simple, very similar to charging the AC on a car. This is the unit that we're working with today. This is a little two-ton R22 system, and this is a 1999 year model. So this thing has been running for over 25 years and is still running like a champ. It starts up great. It has a hard start kit on it. And we're gonna show you on this system how to top off the refrigerant. Now, a couple things I wanna emphasize here is before you add the refrigerant, before we show you this process, there's a few things that you can check that could very well be the cause and it's not a refrigerant issue. First of all is your air filter. A lot of people don't realize that your air filter and your refrigerant are very much so connected. If your air filter is clogged and it's not letting enough air go through the evaporator coil, that's going to make the system freeze up and that's a common indication that you have a clogged air filter. A frozen system is also a good indicator that you could have low refrigerant, but it could also mean that you have a dirty air filter. So I advise checking that first, replacing it, see if that resolves your problem. And something to note is if your system is frozen up, you need to let that thaw. So put a new filter in, let it thaw for a day, then start it and see if it's running like it should. If it freezes back up again, you probably need the refrigerant and you can proceed, but at least check the air filter. Now with that in mind, your evaporator coil could actually be clogged as well from air bypassing the air filter and getting clogged in the evaporator coil. So you can replace the air filter as many times as you want, but that's not going to clean the evaporator coil. So what you need to do is inspect that. There's a little plate that you can take off. Just do a visual inspection. If you have little bits at the top, but most of this is clear, then you should be totally fine and you probably do need refrigerant. But if yours is caked up and you can't even see the fins, then you need to get that cleaned before you proceed. It very well could just have a dirty evaporator coil and that could resolve your problem. But if you go in and inspect it and you see that the evaporator coil is clean, then you can proceed with adding the refrigerant. Now, something else to note is that if you do have a leak, you're gonna wanna try and find that leak. Sometimes they, they may be so minuscule that you can just top off the refrigerant every year or every other year and you'll be totally fine. But if you have a huge leak, you want to get that fixed first. Otherwise, you're just gonna be throwing away money putting refrigerant in it. But I've seen a lot of instances where there was just a small leak and we're able to top off the system over and over every couple years. And we got that system to run for another 10 years. Okay, so on the gauge that you'll get from abilityrefrigerants.com, I just wanna explain how all of this works. So you have your PSI on the outside, but you'll notice these different rings. So R22 is what we're gonna be working with. And you'll notice it's like a greenish aqua ring. Now this is not pressures, this is temperature. So pressures and temperatures are related very much so. And so if say we're at 75 PSI right here, that will correlate to about 40 degrees. That's gonna be the degree of temperature that your indoor evaporator coil is. And with 410A, if we're at 40 degrees, we're gonna be at about 130 PSI. So that's a good um, rough ballpark of where you want your pressures to be. So with R22, our, our goal is to be right at about 75 PSI on a hot day, which correlates to 40 degrees on the indoor coil. Now in either case, if you have 410A or R22, once you get to this 30 degree mark, you're gonna start freezing up on the coil and you're gonna start to get ice buildup. All right, so we have our refrigerant and our hose and our gauge there. Now, the only thing that we're gonna be messing with is the low side here. Now, the way you can differentiate these is that the low side or the suction side is quite a bit larger than the small side. This is the liquid line and this is going to be your 3 8 line and this is gonna be half inch or larger. This is a pretty tiny system. You don't really see half inch very common. Mostly you'll see three quarter and seven eighths. But another way to notice is it's gonna have a larger um, screw on top here. So we're just gonna take the cap off of our low side. We're not gonna worry about the high side. Just set it right here. Now this part is really important. So you'll notice that your gauge has two ports here. 
and you'll notice that they're different. So the one on the right here does not have this little core depressor tool. So it's critical that this is the side that goes to the unit and this is the side that goes to the tank. So for starters, we're gonna hook it up to our tank. So we're gonna take this plastic off and we're gonna hook the end that does not have any, any uh, thing in it and we're gonna connect it right here to the hose. Now, as you can see on the bottle itself, there's also no core depressor. As soon as you open this, it'll allow free flow through here and it's gonna allow free flow through this end of the hose. So we're gonna simply thread this on until it's snug. And then lastly, we'll hook this up to our AC unit. All right, so here at the unit, we have a seal right there. That seal is going to seal right up to this. You'll get a little tiny spurt. It shouldn't be much at all when you thread this on. But the whole idea with this is that little part right there is going to push the Schrader core in and it's gonna allow flow in and out of this. So we'll thread this on all the way. We could just hear that uh, the refrigerant start to flow into this hose. I wanna get it nice and tight. And now what we're gonna do next is we're going to burp the system. So we're just gonna crack this. Let a little bit of refrigerant out and that's it. So now we can see on our gauge that we're registering pressure. Now we're gonna turn the system on and see what this comes to. All right, so we have the system turned on. It's been running for about five minutes now. So we'll get our initial reading here. And as you can see, we're well below where we want it to be. I shouldn't say well below, but we're right at 30 degrees. So eventually this system is going to freeze. And I specifically picked this system because the customer said a company had come out and added refrigerant and she thinks it needs to be topped off again. So this system does have a leak somewhere. It's a pretty small leak because she had it filled last year, I believe. And uh, as you can see, it's low, but it's still cool. Okay, so we've already burped this line, but we're gonna burp it one more time just to make sure there's no oxygen in here. And again, we still have this closed because we're not using a manifold. We're simply using this as our way of feeding in the refrigerant. Now, what we're gonna do is hold this upside down. And what that's gonna do is allow liquid refrigerant to get into this hose and to go into the system. So we're gonna slowly open this and you'll see that gauge climb. So we're adding in refrigerant right now. You can hear the, the compressor change a little bit. So we're just gonna add a little increment at a time, let it run for a couple minutes, add a little bit more. And what we want is around 75 PSI or about 40, 40, three somewhere in there degrees on our green scale. So we've gone up a little bit. We're gonna add a little bit more in here. Turn it back off. And we're just gonna repeat this process until we're at about 75 PSI. Already we can feel a huge difference in how much heat is being extracted and again we were getting cold air coming out of the vents because this green scale reflects what the temperature of the evaporator coil is and we went from 30 to about 40 but if you're at 30 it's gonna be cold but then eventually it's going to freeze up and you're gonna have issues so a good rule of thumb is generally you want about 40 degrees at your evaporator coil inside. And just for reference, if you were on four, uh, 410A, 40 would correlate with about 125 or 130 PSI, and that's a good range for your low side is about 130 PSI if you had 410. But for R22, we're right in the sweet spot of about 75 PSI, and we are good to go. All right, so we're right there at 75 PSI. It is that easy to add refrigerant to your system. Again, if everything is functioning as it should, this is super easy to do. But if you have other issues like a refrigerant um, blockage or a clogged air filter, this process is going to be difficult. So you wanna make sure and eliminate those other issues first and then proceed with adding refrigerant. All right, so all we have to do now is disconnect our gauges and we'll be completely done. You can do this with it running or without. You'll get a little spurt here 
but nothing major. That's pretty much it. And that's the beauty of an R22 system. They just are not high pressure systems and I love them so much. I wish we could go back to R22, but unfortunately that hit ship has sailed. <laughs> so if you have an R22 system, keep it running as long as you can and they'll treat you well. Well guys, it's that easy to top off the refrigerant on your R22 system with this recharge kit from AbilityRefrigerants.com. As always, our goal is to help you save money as a DIYer, as a homeowner with your HVAC system. Something else that I wanna mention that is of a lot of value is our monthly newsletter. So we send a newsletter every single month that helps you save money with your HVAC system in maintaining and repairing it. And every single subscriber to our newsletter is automatically entered to our monthly giveaway. We've given away mini split systems. We're doing cash prizes, smart thermostats. This giveaway is just expanding every single month. So make sure and subscribe to our newsletter so you can save money and also get entered for our giveaway. Now, if you wanna see how to do this whole process on a 410A system of recharging it with this recharge kit from abilityrefrigerants.com, you can find that video right there. And until next time, you guys be safe. Later.